Good evening, everyone. Uh, I don't know if I have to say about Akshay Patra. Akshay Patra is, uh, is a midday meal program serving the underprivileged children in the schools. It is one of the biggest uh, uh, meal uh, program in the world. Akshay, pa Akshay Patra is in the uh, Limka Book of Records. We are till late. I mean, we started with just five schools in Bangalore, uh, serving 1,500 children. And today we are serving 1.6 million children in India, covering 11 states with 26 locations. I just want you to show the kitchen. Akshay Patra. A school. Little more. Hygiene and cleanliness. At full value of their classroom experience. In South India, we serve rice, sambar with vegetables and yogurt or curd. And in North India, we serve chapatis, dal or sabzi, and vegetable rice or kheer. Akshay Patra began its feeding program in Bangalore in July 2000 and today serves food in nine states across India. Akshay Patra leverages technology and innovations to maximize operational efficiency in its kitchens. Human handling is minimized to ensure high standard of hygiene and cleanliness. A large cauldron like this cooks sambar for 6,000 children in less than two hours. The chapati making machine rolls out 60,000 chapatis per hour and has automated oil sprinklers. Food containers are loaded into custom-built vehicles and transported to distant schools. Each vehicle carries food for about 5,000 children and travels 45 miles from the kitchen facility each day. Akshaya Patra has been lauded as a successful model of centralized kitchens suitable for urban and semi-urban locations. Akshaya Patra has initiated an alternative program in remote rural locations with greater challenges of road connectivity. We began this program in Bana, a district in Rajasthan, which is inhabited by the marginalized Saharia tribes. An extremely remote, underdeveloped area, Bara posed a challenge. The decentralized kitchen model established here engages women self-help groups to cook meals for the children. Thus, apart from providing school meals, the Akshay Patra decentralized program has generated employment for the local women. This model of the decentralized program has been replicated in Nayagarh district, Orissa and Mathura district, Uttar Pradesh. This program is conducted in partnership 
with the state and central governments of India that provide a subsidy to provide meals. Bangalore City Corporation sponsors all children from class 1 to class 12 under the Akshay Patra program. We have several partners from the corporate world. Akshay Patra has inspired many NGOs sharing the technology and processes as well as training the personnel to implement the program. Akshay Patra has also initiated other child and education programs such as teacher training, life skills training, after school tutorials, scholarships, medical interventions, etc. The Indian Institute of Management has been involved in keeping track of the impact of this program. AC Nielsen studies found that Akshay Patra School Meal Program has improved school enrollment. increased attendance, reduced dropout rate, and enhanced classroom performance. The nutritional state of the child has seen a tremendous improvement. Akshay Patra is a uh, government partner program wherein the government is already there in the schools with the midday meal program and we get a subsidy of uh, 4 rupees 80 paise per child from the government and we add 5 more rupees from the donors and to make it a more nutritious and a healthy food for the kids. The beauty about Akshay Patra is wherever it is present it sees that it provides the kids with the local flavor of the food. Uh, for example if it is in Telangana we provide them the sambar dal, tomato dal, the chutneys and all is provided and if it is Gujarat uh, northern area, we see that we, uh, the kids get, they are happy with the rotis, sabji, pulao uh, kind of things. And the, the one thing I would like to share is, yeah, the main thing I would like to share is usually uh, there is a myth that Akshay Patra is a well-funded organization. But no one sees that the kind of cause it is supporting. You know, the cause is so big that even one Akshay Patra is not enough to uh, serve the kids, uh, the hungry kids. The, we are under, you know, behind many countries when you compare the malnutrition problem what we are facing today. So I feel like the, the cause is so big and it is unlike any other program you provide them a sanitation or a furniture or a, you know, teaching learning material but the food is not like that. Once you start serving a school you have to continue the servings with the school. You have a donor support, you have funds, you don't have funds. You cannot come up with a reason with the uh, kids. So I, I request everyone to come forward and uh, think of serving this cause again. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. One question, we can have it. In the decentralized areas, wherein we cannot come up with a big kitchens in the remote areas. So we train the self-help group uh, ladies and uh, uh, provide them with the small infrastructure wherein they can cook the food and serve the children. So infrastructure training and also the problems yeah, are also given yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it is a wonderful presentation. Each one was a unique learning experience we had from the five distinguished organizations. Uh, to begin with, we had uh, Ms. Hiran Patel on uh, training and more focus on skill building, what they were doing, it, it's wonderful. And focusing more on preventive health is what they talked about it. And uh, please give a round of applause, they have entered into Limca Book of Records. <laughs> Second, Dr. Jiptesh Rath from NMDC, doing a wonderful job in the area of uh, education, contributing, because if you educate a child, he's lifelong, he'll earn. That's a good cause you're taken up and funding. And uh, give a round of applause to NMDC for doing a wonderful job. I'd like to share with the permission of director, they are the first one to come up and fund this institution when we talked about building this new campus. 
the next we had mr arvind sahu and uh, the two things which they are promoting is promoting culture because india is known for rich culture and traditions and somebody supporting that kind of thing and sports our youth has to be encouraged that's an area we are doing great work a round of applause to them and uh, ms bharti from gmr we are all aware they are doing a lot of work in the area of women empowerment that's the area where they focus right from the beginning and also taking care of migrant labor children children is very very important children are the future of this nation and that's an area we are doing it and quite often we talk about building the skill building and then making them to produce something they also take the responsibility of marketing those products they deserve a round of applause too and lastly ms rajini sinha from akshay patra all our children you are taking care of their basic needs that's food without food we can't do anything and there's a great service your organization is doing it round of applause to them let me move on with my presentation to any what do we talk about corporation corporate has made for profits there's nothing wrong in that i am supporter of that but what we look for is what is that we are contributing to the society is very very important simple example go back to your student days we all been funded not only by our parents indirectly by the society in various forms we got the benefit for all of us then what is that we are contributing to the society at large this was my question with right from 2012 june my director knows and i was insisting on please now let me go do something about it we all talk about mou credits and so many things we keep talking about why there should be credits at all when you talk about social responsibility we in the academic world as students and teachers we are all worried about credits marks percentages score do char point i think when you talk about social responsibility you should not worry about credits i think dr ratsa was saying nmdc started doing much before when act came into picture that's the kind of voluntary service one need talk about when you talk about csr don't say that rule has to come pass parliament has to pass act then we'll implement it let's go much beyond and do what we can do it don't worry about profits profits will flow in that's a guarantee i'll give it take up social responsibility do something what a little you can do it it'll get you profits don't worry about profits today market is grown market is much bigger than any one of us where do you confine yourself to local markets global markets are open to us we can go and get profits that's not issue what is that we are contributing it we have been talking so many things with discussions banners flags rights facebook likes and dislikes whatever it is we keep doing it but we need to start looking inside us what is it we are doing as an organization as an individual that's it where we need to look at it we need to start introspecting it and find ways which we can successfully change the world we are part of this our world what is it we can bring in that small change that change makes wonders if we can do that that's an area where one need to look at it csr has become a buzzword everybody talks about it i'm aware of that are we talking about responsiveness or responsibility i leave the answer to you you decide whatever you want it in my view it has to be responsiveness with responsibility is what we need to talk about it people came up csr so many things of course all of us talk about corporate social responsibility my question is corporate sustainability responsibility can we sustain so many schemes we are starting it maybe because of pressure from somebody or from outside maybe because of pressure somebody from within side but can we sustain these things is question to be looked at it and the other thing which i'll say is corporate societal responsibility we have it we need to look at the society at large or are we looking at corporate solutions redefined so that we can get a better advantage from the society where we are part of it or are we talking about corporate socially relevant activities this is a question to be looked at it i know we all talk about corporate social responsibility the mission with which we all work there is no doubt about it for me it is different it is citizen social responsibility it has to be passion is a burning desire from inside is what needed when you talk about citizen social every one of us i have a simple session to all the corporate i know on one side you say the kind of students what you are producing in the academic year they are not suitable fine it's very easy to comment even i can comment listen i have a simple session each one of you can you come out on a day of your choice every year maybe it's a marriage day or birthday or whatever it is please come and share your knowledge in a college of your choice i don't see even say you come to ip wherever you want 
One day, imagine if you can, each one of you can come. Can you come, imagine the amount of practical knowledge which is transferred to these young boys and girls? And you get a better lot to you. Don't come back and tell us. Are we doing our duty to go back and do something for these young boys and girls who are coming to the corporate world? Need to be looked at it. Are we talking about CSR for the undeserved or underserved? To be questioned. Undeserved or underserved? Please look into it. I will not go into details. Certain things I'd like to leave it for your own thinking. We should be spending more time on the resources of healthcare, but seems to be building more of Medicare. I don't know why you talk about building hospitals and this and that. Do you mean to say if you should fall sick, then you talk about CSR? We should be talking more on health area where we talk about. Can we build a gym? Can we build a yoga center, meditation center, walking track, running track, build the parks, greenery, kill, create greenery? We're all talking about pollution levels going down. Then what is it we are talking about? It? Please, enough. We are done on medicals. Please do something on the healthcare. Don't make people to fall sick. Then you talk about CSR. That's too late to talk about it. By then, patient is dead. Is what? So don't talk about Medicare and wealth care. Please talk about health care. Is what I have suggestion. Sorry, I'm harsh in some things. I'm not against anybody. I hope this conference, which is organized by my colleagues at IP will provide a platform to all of us to introspect and retrospect and prospect for CSR. The question I have is, we all talk about so many reports we generate and submit to the authorities concerned. Are we performers or pretenders of CSR to get the credits? Is a question to be looked at it, because I've seen some of the projects. For CSR, start with a vision. There's no doubt we need to have vision. I know my boss is revision. And start, stay with the mystery zeal with which you need to work for it. And you need to have that passion to do things is very, very important. It's not by law, it's not by enforcement, it's not by bosses monitoring, so I need to work for it. We need to have that passion to do things. I'm sure this conference will be a thought-provoking and festival of ideas and vision because we are listening to so many people. Each one of you are doing a great work, no doubt about it. It will help all of us to consolidate the whole thing, come out with a new strategy which we can really talk about uplifting the society at large, is what one need to look at it. The idea of organizing any conference is to connect, share, and collectively grow together. All of us, we need to grow. We need to connect with each other. I have a small session. I keep talking about it. When you come for the seminars, conferences, training programs, please don't sit in the same chair. Tomorrow, when you come back here, in fact, every session, you should change your seat and see the next person is a different person. Connect with people, talk to people, interact with people. That gets you a lot of things. Otherwise, quite often these days, I see in the cities, major cities, in apartments, they say, I don't know who is my neighbor. What is it we are talking about? We are part of the society. We are human beings. And unfortunately, the scenario has gone to such an extent, even husband and wife, they don't have time to talk to each other. That's very unfortunate. It's happening, I'm telling you. True CSR, when you talk about true CSR, do all the good you can by all the means you can. In all the ways possible you can. In all the places you can, where you're confining only to Buster district or what are the districts you're talking about? Please do these, so many places. Because we're all directly contributing, indirectly contributing to your profits also. Don't think only that area is contributing to it. To all the people you can, as long as ever you can, please do that. That's the CSR. This is a true social responsibility, I call it. Citizen social responsibility. I realize that only talks, discussions, banners, flags, rights, Facebook likes, shares won't bring any change. In the last two years, thanks to my boss, Professor Mishra, who is sitting here, thanks to him, nice of him, finally he agreed to relieve me. I know it was two and a half years he took it to relieve me. 2012 June, I remember, 10th June 2012. That's first I expressed my interest to leave. Finally, anyway, 2014, December 11th. And since then, I did this as a full-time task to go around the college, share my knowledge and experience of what a little I have it. All this, in the last two years, sir, you may be happy to note that your colleague is doing something. More than 200 lectures are delivered in various colleges, including universities. And conducted about 44 development programs and about 40 student development programs in the last two years. All this without looking for any credits from anybody. I'm not answerable to anyone. I'm answerable to self. I'm answerable to the Almighty is what I'm looking at is what one need to look at it. In the last two years, all this without taking a single rupee. My boss knows. 
you will be shocked to listen, I get a monthly pension of only 1900 rupees. 1900 rupees is what the pension is. Pension scheme. That's all what I get. But still, anyway, that doesn't stop me. On top of it, I give cash prizes to students without making profits. You are talking 2% profits, you will give CSR. I don't make any profits, but I'm willing to do that. I always allocated 1 lakh rupees from my savings, whatever I have, for the students if they can answer my questions. Otherwise, no. Sorry, I can't give. No free lunches. I know you are generous, you are giving free lunches. I can't give free lunches. And the another area where we have done, I have done some little service you are talking about. I did a recently program for the Naxal children, girls' children, in the Warangal district. It was a 40-day program. They approached me, but I said, I can't spare 40 days. Three to four days I can spare. I went for three days. We did a program. Believe me, trust me, I can see the smile on the faces of the children at the end of the three days. Can we contribute something? Because we want them to bring to the mainstream, we talk about it. What is it we're going and doing? It? And I remember that SP told me, sir, I can't pay any money. I said, don't worry about money. Money is not a problem. I'm there to support that kind of causes. Can we bring in some small change in these people is what one need to look at. It. Even if I can change, I always keep thinking about it. Even if I can change one person in my lifetime, I will say I've done significant contribution to the society at large. What We are all part of it. Without doing much, because I've been controlling all of you, I should have self-control. So I'd like to close. I'd like to, I'm very much impressed by the passion and hard work of my colleagues. The three people I can see, they're sitting there. Dr. Shulagna Sarkar, Dr. Punam Singh, and the new entrant, Dr. Deepthi Chandra, doing a great work. I think they deserve a big round of applause because we're all able to meet because of the work done by them. And they start corresponding with us, interact with us, and trying to fix. Sometimes we say, no, can you, madam, change this, that, that. All that they take the trouble and give us this opportunity, wonderful opportunity. And finally, I will thank all of you for the patient listening. And thanks to my boss, Professor Mishraji, for giving this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, one and all. Money, okay. Pass on that money to the yeah. society for yeah. some cause. Yeah. Maybe that's a good session. I'll take it. Oh. 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 Thank you, everyone, on this day. Now we have Mr. Abhishek Ranjan, Head Sustainability and CSR, Radio Technologies of the I request ma'am to uh, welcome sir with a floral bouquet. Mr. Abhishek Ranjan, Head Sustainability and CSR, Brilio Technologies, Bangalore. He currently leads banking industry, market, marketing, sustainability, sustainability and CSR for Brilio Technologies. Mr. Ranjan brings with him 20 years of experience in the social sector. He started his career with IBM as a business analyst and later worked for Oracle Financial Services, where he was credited with setting up customer centers and industry relations function in India. He is a social media expert and teaches social media marketing at various institutions. He has served on the board of various non-profit and CSR IT committees of CII, BCIC and NASCOM. He is the member of IQA cell of Government College Bidadi, Chairman of rotated, uh, Rotary JBN Trust and the Founder Trustee of Netra Lake Rejuvenation Trust. He was recently awarded for his work in the areas of in the area of lake and water development by Honorable Union Lay, uh, Law Ministry, Minister Sri Sadananda Gowda. He has led community engagement pro projects to deliver e-learning, digital learning, STEM program, 
uh, 100 plus heart surgeries for children, mobile eye clinic, midday meal, evening school, comfort stations, career guidance, girls glory project, AIDS awareness to name a few. Mr. Abhishek Ranjan is an alumnus of IMT Ghazabad and he has done an executive program in strategic CSR from IIM Bangalore and digital social media marketing from ISP Hyderabad. Sir has been recently appointed as a state convener of Varnataka Sports Advisory Working Committee of Government of Karnataka. Thank you so much, sir. We, I open the session for you now. Thank you. Since morning, I was thinking, you know, whether um, we might ask for this conference because you know I'm the only guy coming from the tech sector, uh, coming from a private, uh, you know, corporate CSR. Uh, most of you are from public enterprise. Um, you know, yesterday when I was walking around this campus, I saw most of the people who got placed last year were actually in private sector. Right, uh, that's our photos and all those things. So a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, in my mind, a lot of things were going around. Anyway, so I have a responsibility to manage my global sustainability and global CSR. So I spend a lot of time outside India managing stuff, uh, what's happening in Europe. And so there are a lot of contradictions because I, what I see in US and what I see in Europe and what I see in 2% law, all are very different in by nature, right? One of the things what globally has been proven and everybody is talking about is impact. Uh, I'm not very, I would probably, I think everybody has kind of gone away from scenario where actually we are talking about numbers, okay? Uh, numbers in terms of money or uh, in rupees and all, because if you look at cumulative CSR budgets of Indian companies, it is, it is probably a one-fourth or one-fifth of one union ministry budget, right? Uh, that's the kind of amount we are talking about. But sir, morning sir was talking about why it was not taxed. Because if it was, that's was not the idea behind this whole law. Because I think government wanted us not only to pay this money out of our profit, but actually make it create an impact. And it's always been a long-term sustainable kind of a development. So if you look at globally what's happening, uh, every problem, whether United Nations, government, private sectors, social entrepreneurs, everybody's talking about these four areas. Whatever we do, how we are sustainable on it. And we have definitely moved from output, outcome to impact. That's where we are moving on. So nobody is going to question or talk about what numbers we are talking about, how, you know, how many toilets you build, but I'm, in the five years, is the toilet are sustainable? If I'm build a school in the six years, what kind of impact is created? So it's all very great. But I was attending a Ministry of Women Child Conference on Child at Risk. And I was very happy the first time Government of India, especially the Women and Child Department, they actually mentioned that now we are talking about the problem in terms of data. Where we are, what's the situation? So all the SDG, we are nowhere close. You take all the 17 SDGs, we are nowhere close in terms of our data numbers, what we have committed to the United Nations. But the good part is that everybody is at least accepting at the government level where is a challenge. So the impact can happen only in the current scenario where millions of people are actually needed to, uh, you know, impacted by the technology innovation. So whatever we do, how we are innovating, how we're integrating technology into it, because that will give you a mass impact. Because no longer the questions is about 100 school, 5,000 children, we are actually talking about changing the lifetime of lots of millions of people, and that's where the technology is going to play a major, major role. Social entrepreneurship, uh, so I think, you know, if you see the current budget, what has come yesterday, there's a lot of invitation have been given on social development, social entrepreneurship. RBI has, um, I had a fortune to meet a couple of very senior executives from RBI and they said they have given a directive to all the banks that social entrepreneurship loans or whatever kind of support they need, you have to make it as a priority. It wasn't a priority earlier. So you can see that globally, nationally, across the geographies, these are the four things which are actually driving the global challenge. 
Now, if you go back to my topic, it was doing good, doing, if you want to do well in your, in whichever aspect, you have to continue to do good, right? Look at these, all these numbers, and uh, if you see that what kind of challenges we are, you know, apart from the climate challenge, you know, where the temperatures are going up, the, even, our, uh, even our assets are going to be at risk, and that's, that's a World Bank, and so many data are there, I'm not going to throw more and more data on that, but look at what's happening. Every country is kind of, you know, after the uh, COP21, you know, every country, is, country has actually come up and started doing programs. And you know, just two days before Obama left his office, I think, I don't know how many of you know the story, the two, day, day, two days before Obama left his office, he cut a check of 500 million USD for gl global fund, for climate fund. Because he knew that because the next president will come, he'll stop because the next president doesn't believe, he said the climate change is a hoax. So that's the kind of uh, mindset we are looking at. I know it's a big challenge for uh, COP21 to be successful because China is already not committing to what they have promised. Um, you know, US is already saying that, that the climate change or the whole environmental concerns are not existing, it's a fake. So this is the kind of scenario we are looking at. Uh, but the good part is that there are a lot of good things happening across the world. Uh, you know, and thus, this is, of course, Swachh Bharat is one of the successful campaigns we are looking at, right? So there's a lot of public-private partnership happening. You are seeing that how sustainable, uh, you know, your solar or other alternative energy sources are becoming cheaper and available. The biggest hit in the car in U.S. is Tesla car, which is a basically, a, you know, zero emission car. Or you're seeing that how in Indian uh, circumstances also, a lot of people are actually going on the renewable sources, right? So there are a few changes uh, we are seeing globally happening. Now, if we don't act, CSR is a regulation. So I, I don't want to talk about CSR. I think a lot of experts are talking more about CSR. Let me talk about more on sustainability and how globally CSR is uh, one of the important aspects of the sustainability. So if you look at uh, how things are changing. So Black, BlackRock, which, is, uh, which actually manages the entire, you know, one of the largest fund managers across the world, not only they have written in 2015 to the uh, top CEOs, but actually they followed it. McKinsey actually interviewed a lot of people in a lot of senior executives, a lot of CEOs in US, saying that why does sustainability feature in your business agenda? And the CEOs were very clever to say that because in, when we were doing MBAs, sustainability was not a part of the course. Of course, that's not the right answer, but if you look at a CFA exam, right, which is equivalent to CA in India, have actually already included ESG, which is, a, which is basically sustainability. So very soon you will see in India, most of the B schools, most of the uh, international schools, uh, B schools have already included uh, sustainability as a part of their curriculum. So the future business leaders understand what we are talking about because, because sustainability and CSR is not an agenda of two people or five people member of a sustainability or CSR team. But actually it's an agenda has to be uh, org wide, then only it can be uh, done, right? So, you know, we all know about BRR reports. I don't have to uh, talk more about it. Look at how the change is happening in the world. So one company, single company, how much assets they have. They actually have more than 86% of the countries. So can we not talk about private sectors and their, you know, responsibility and sustainability? Because if these guys are so giant and more bigger than 86% of the world, then what will happen if they don't do anything of the country? So if you look at the food economy, you know, asset wealth creation, everything is with the private sector, right? Traditionally, whatever government was supposed to do, now private sector is providing all the services to us. This is another survey done by Harvard and you know, with the, obviously for the US companies and they found that whichever company in the longer run had been sustainable, they were more profitable. So just to kind of reinforce what I'm uh, trying to say that. I'm moving very fast because I have 20 minutes. So uh, if you look at what has happened, this is a very big survey done by McKinsey over, uh, globally. 3,500 senior executives of, uh, of all the large corporations have actually participated. And what I want to uh, stress is that if you look at what is driving sustainability and responsibility was mostly reputation and regulation. And you know, this is not very visible, but basically it's operational efficiency, which is basically low hanging fruit and you're lowering your cost. But what has changed in the last five to six years is aligning to the business goals. So if you see that who are the guys who typically manage this function in the company, 
and who are the guys managing operation efficiency you seen the shift of sustainability is actually going to the C uh, csr i'm sorry the corporate uh, board or maybe the senior management so this is the shift we are seeing and this is a survey of 3500 ceos and cxos of us so this is where the, the shift is happening now every company their business responsibility and sustainability we saw five people talking and every five of us has chosen a different part to way to uh, to support the community so it is it is up to the companies to kind of what is material for your sustenance what is material for your for responsibility but one thing is very important whether you do whatever but in until unless there's a culture of organization so culture is very important in my sense because if you don't have a culture in the organization to be responsible or sustainable i think all will there we can never have an impact because all we are saying it uh, you know employees 9 to 6 they believe in it but after that they forget about it you do a such bharat campaign until it's become a cultural issue people will behave in a that environment but afterwards they'll behave very differently now every company need to have a business case uh, of course we have our own business case because we work in a global environment uh, we can't um, sit quiet till the sustainability hits us as a compliance or or, or the government regulations right low hanging fruit lot of efforts you can do in energy consumption which will give you operational efficiency lower satisfaction we all know how it is important and by the way sustainability is not about environment csr only you'll have to create hundreds of policies to kind of make it functional so you have a whistle blow policy equal equal pay equal opportunity policy a lot of these things and this is has to be a standard as per the gri g4 so so this is what what we are seeing it and having these systems and processes in place i think you can you can actually cut down your risk because what happened to enforce is we got to know that the the security guy which in pune agency was not actually authorized security agency Right, that's what the news. I don't know how much truth it is, but I'm saying a lot of these things. Pro if you do proactively because of sustainability in place, actually you de-risk your company's uh, uh, you know risk of the future. Corporate citizenship. Is, I think people talked about individual social responsibility. That's that's pretty much the driver for sustainability. Brand value. If you look at the largest uh, FMCG companies in India, which is Nestle and, and Unilever, the new logos are have all changed. So you know, two Maggie has become two minutes. for education and kitkat has become no break from education similarly unilever has done whether it's a patanjali effect or a disruption effect but that's what we are seeing and you know you, i can talk more detail about other brands but i think we'll move on but this is one of the drivers we are seeing it now a lot of bigger companies the risk is very high because even if a supply chain does something wrong let's say if you you have procured from somewhere and if you have they have goofed up then it's your responsibility and you will be in the soup because the reason is very simple because bigger brands can be targeted very easily so so you all we know that uh, iphones are manufactured in us uh, sorry in china and the company is foxconn but why there's a lot of noise about in us because the work the labor condition the sweat shop what we call it is very bad in china and that's why the people in us are against apple products and they're actually raising voice and that's what apple have started now talking to these guys to have a better working relations similar thing happened with nike in the bangladesh episode when they're actually using sweat shops and you we seen that in the garment manufacturing industry so what this company has done foxconn is that you know they the labor labors were actually you know mom suiciding their self they actually go on the uh, to rooftop and they were actually suiciding the you know but you know, this company was so smart they actually put a fishing net around it so people if they actually uh, jump from the building they'll catch hold of him and get back to the work so this the kind of labor situations we are talking about circular economy this is another big big driver i think what is industrial waste for you probably a gold mine for somebody else right we have seen countries like sweden i think many of us have heard about sweden what's happening in sweden there's a first country in the world who doesn't have any waste and actually buying waste from countries of other european countries because the entire energy consumption of sweden is based on uh, you know this model so they don't have any waste left in the country so they are actually buying from other other places other countries so this is the kind of thing we are seeing what technology can do there are lot of things to be talked about but i have to, have to skip faster now this is a typical conversation happened with when a ceo and a cfo of an organization where the ceo believes in it that his sustainability and business responsibility should be a key driver for business organization but the cfo always talks about numbers and you know this is what the typical conversation happened and that's why we're seeing that's becoming a top uh, management mandate 
Now, this is a, this is a very no, uh, known to all of us, especially the companies who are into mining and other industries, how difficult it is. And we have seen a lot of private companies, what happened with Unilever in Kodekanal, what happened with uh, uh, Coca-Cola in Kerala, and so many other examples like Poscos and other. So I think it's, it's very... Yeah, it's, you know, it's very difficult for nowadays with the event of social media where everybody has got a voice and also the social activism has become bigger and bigger and bolder. I think it's very difficult for companies to not to operate. So, we, so in, the, in CSR parlance we say that if you don't manage your stakeholders, then someday stakeholders will manage you. So that's the situation we are talking about. Now, uh, so all of us know, I, I'll give you a very interesting uh, fact here. Uh, how many of you know who are the biggest, uh, you know, investors in ITC apart from the British Tobacco? How many? Who, how many, uh, who are the biggest uh, is the shareholder in ITC? And this is such a contrast that you know the biggest shareholders in ITC, which is a tobacco manufacturing company, which is actually killing lots of people, is actually the their insurance companies. Right, the LSE is one of the largest. So I think people are not talking about, but tomorrow it can be a disaster PR story for ITC, uh, for you know uh, this insurance company. So you will see your shareholders actually coming up and talking about it. I had a friend, um, she manages uh, CSR for HPCL, and she was mentioning to me that in the recent AGM, I, I'm not sure how many of you face the same situation. 50% of the AGM question was about CSR. I don't know what is the percentage of yours, but that's the kind of, and she was very happy because, you know, um, she was getting more importance because, you know, everybody's asking for CSR. So that is, the, that is the change happening. Now, there are visible stakeholders which you can manage. So if you look at 10 years back, industries could manage five shareholders, five stakeholders, or maybe 10 or 15. But suddenly one person from nowhere will become your, uh, you know, stakeholder because he, can or he or she can actually go on YouTube and Twitter and talk about the bad things what you're doing as an organization. So there are changes, we are seeing it, and um, I'm just rushing fast and fast. Uh, so it's look at the how CSR itself is evolving. What Manmohan Singh has said a few years back when the CSR was about to become an act, and what is now Prime Minister Modi is saying, you can see a clear shift now. I think both are right at their, their uh, you know, times. But what is happening is, if, so if you look at Prime Minister Modi, uh, you know, input, which he did it in the same, I think, in the Tirupati, uh, you know, he is talking about scientific social responsibility. I think everyone will talk about impact moving forward, not about the cost or the... Okay, so this slide, which is talking about where we'll go from the CSR uh, from now, right? So I think depth and not breadth, I think we all understand. Uh, I don't have to dwell into it. We definitely have to prioritize long term. So if you're building a toilet, if you're building a school, if you're building any systems, I think it has to be five years plan. And I think only under five years if you sustain, then we can talk very highly about it. Now, the culture of responsible business is very important because the culture cannot be built in a day one or day two. Right? It has to over a period. So what's the impression if you have for Tata's or Visa with different companies, I think you, you better understand that. But this is very important because not only the, the, the business of a business is not only to manage environment and society, but the biggest business of a business is to manage their own people. So how are you creating your individual, your individual as a responsible business or corporate citizen? That is one of the biggest things which you see in the next future. I already talked about out, output, outcome, and impact. Now there's something called strategic CSR 80-20 rule, right? So most of the company will have certain expenses you have to do for the local needs. But I think largely, you see 80 to, I mean, it can vary. It can you have 90, 20 rule or 70, 30 rule. But you will see that this is a trend happening where companies are actually investing more on strategic CSR long term with the impact and, and probably doing short term activities for this 20%, that's all. Or maybe you can 70, 30, whichever suits you. Now, the, always there's a question asked by everybody is that should, should we talk, how much we should talk about CSR, right? And if you really see that, it's definitely you need to communicate the good work you're doing, but definitely you can't advertise what, what Unilever's of the world or what uh, Nestle has done with this, this, this adding uh, you know, on their uh, taglines. So these are the few things where actually we have to see in the, in the next coming years. Okay, so this is my last slide. Uh, you know, um, you know, this is basically kind of summarize what CSR can do for all of us. And if you look at, uh, definitely you are more closer to your community. So you can have a better anticipation and management, so better risk management for your organization. 
Um, you can you enhance it. So I think millennial crowd, especially the crowd which is millennial, uh, if you recruit them more, I think they, they definitely like to see their companies who are more socially responsible. They want to join those organizations. You can definitely enhance operation efficiency and cost savings by various means. And also because if employees are happy, they are more committed to the organization, they, are more, uh, they will do more uh, better work for the organization. Now, you will be always more glued to the community. You will have understanding, you know, a lot of information about how political systems are changing. I think this, this gives a great access to that. Especially if you're looking at a foreign investment, especially with the FIIs and FDIs, they definitely look for your sustainability agenda. Most of our company, most of the customers we work with, they actually ask for sustainability report and sustainability compliance before actually signing a deal with us. So all of these reputation management, innovation, all of this, if you look at, these are the, these are the only thing, I think we are all doing good work, but I think we have to see that how much is actually contributing, right? So may not be CSR contributing in terms of revenue of a company, but I think definitely you can assist on these areas to your organization to grow. So this is all I had to share. Uh, I think you know I finished the one hour presentation in 20 minutes. So thank you so much. Now, uh, I was just having a thought. Yesterday, those of you might have heard the finance minister make his speech or may, may be seen in paper that uh, corporate, tax, uh, corporate tax is sought to be reduced from 30% to 20%, 25%. You know, my design would be, uh, suppose I were uh, top management of a company, whether PSU or private, you are getting opportunity. 30% becomes 25%. Your tax burden goes down by 5%. So begin at 25%. Then CSR, now let me uh, clarify. I didn't say that CSR uh, should be given to government as a tax. You know, design is that CSR is a compulsion for uh, spending by the company on the society. That is not going to, should not go to government. In fact, when some people try to give to Prime Minister Relief Fund, it is bad. It is your money you should spend. Without district magistrate, without uh, chief minister, without minister's constituency approach, you should spend it as a compulsory element of spending. Fine. Now, should it be compulsory or voluntary debatable point? You may be, I would prefer to be voluntary because people would spend. You know, MCL was presenting. I was, you know, myself, chairman of the CSR and Social Committee of MCL, as a independent director of MCL. I was myself, you know, what you saw. Sahu was presenting, much of the uh, programs I had uh, also contributed. Now, therefore, MCL, CCL, NCL, they're all spending 5%. Why 2%? NMDC is spending more than uh, 5% before law came by their own voluntary means because for them, land is raw material. For a coal company, Raw material is not coal, it's land. If they don't get land, they're finished. So they have to, without law also, spend on society, on the villagers, on the community. Otherwise, they will not get the land. So that part is compulsory by stakeholders, not by law. Only we made a law. So I would say 25% tax you pay to government as a corporate tax, 2% uh, you don't give to government, but you earmark a part and spend on society, so 25, 27% goes from your profit. Okay, I would say the CSR voluntary part begins there, 27% above. You are still below 30%. You are still a gainer, you don't lose. I would say 25% tax you go, give 2% you keep a part for your spending on, because the government, uh, schemes, most of the government schemes, you can see they are, what government should do, they are asking us to do. Fine, okay, you do it. But put your stamp on it. Otherwise, people will say, oh, I, this was given by district magistrate, by collector. I don't say collector is bad, I was myself collector, but I don't mean to say bad. But your, uh, your stamp should not be lost. Then beyond 27% what you do is real, it is real, voluntary 
CSR. I would design the scheme that way. I thought this is a something should not be lost sight of. Thank you very much. So my request, uh, shall I move on to present the uh, memento to uh, Mr. Dabey sir. Thank you, so thank you so much, sir. I really thank each one of you for your patient hearing and you have been here throughout the, all the sessions. I thank for that. Right. So have a great day and a great evening. Thank you.